Наконец-то смог я тебя зимой вытащить. Обратно в парную. Э, домашних условиях не повторять. Просто видно, но нормально. Что и сам, как ощущение? Сегодня суббота. Парная, но я уже готов к понедельнику. Даже воскресенье не нужно. Холодная процедура восстановлена. If you enjoy our content, consider leaving like, subscribe and ring the bell. Al Jermaine Sterling about Henry Seyudo's jokes being racial. That's just the way I am. Some people are just weird in that sense. It's like you, you, you want to be a hater so bad. And I think Henry and some of the jokes he's making, it's like if this was back in high school and we were making these jokes, it would be hilarious. Even now, like I, I still could like smile at him. Like, okay. But at the end of the day, I feel like all the jokes he has made so far has all been racial jokes outside of the Denzel, Aljamain, Washington or something like that. Uh, that's the only one that has seemed to has not been racial. And I'm like, the evil Kermit Aljamain on my shoulder is like, go back to the high school vicious Aljo and just decimate this guy racially. And I'm like, but that, that I'm not trying to do that. I'm not trying to start a race war. I think that's beneath me at this point and uh, i would have thought that would have been beneath him as well um like even for shits and giggles like if i legitimately came to the press conference and smacked henry Cejudo with a burrito how crazy would that be and then i talk some shit out there and say a couple of racial slurs it's gonna be like or some stereotypes let me not even say slurs some stereotypes i yeah it might go viral it will go viral actually But I also look like a complete cunt in the process, you know? So um, it, it's just one of those things. It's, it's one of those lines I'm kind of like, I, I don't know if I'm really trying to cross that line, but it is what it is. Like, I'm not going to stop Henry's fun. If that's the only way he can stay relevant, it is what it is. Um, and I can make fun of myself. Like, again, like I, I chuckled a bit. It was like, oh. Oh, Hennessy. Okay. okay, I guess he just assumes and thinks all oh, black people just like Hennessy. Um, and I will say there's a good amount of my friends that love Hennessy. Um, I actually don't even drink the shit no more. Sean Strickland about Paulo Costa. Here's the thing about Costa, and I like Costa, but he's also a F-head, Strickland said. He doesn't make weight, he's an idiot, so it's like when you're F-head and you go to the UFC and you say, hey, I want to do this. I almost fought Marvin Vittori on a today notice because his wouldn't make weight. So it's hard when you don't do the right things, it's hard to get the right things back. Marvin Vittori thinks UFC middleweight champion Alex Pereira has Israel Adesanya's number. No, no, if they fight with Izzy Adesanya again, he'll beat Izzy again, Vittori told the schmo. I don't know. I feel like he had a mission on beating him and then now nah, he doesn't really even. I mean, of course he cares because everybody cares about money. But he knows it's like risky to fight anybody that has very good grappling. But I don't mind him, I like him. If I have a chance to fight him, definitely I want to fight him. Michael Bisping about Benil saying that Dustin should retire. Dustin the Diamond Poirier should retire from the sport of mixed martial arts. That's not me saying that, don't worry. I would never disrespect the diamond, I'm a massive fan. That is the words of one surging lightweight contender. I am talking about Benil Dariush. He's the number four lightweight on the planet. And he came out this week, he was on Submission Radio. And that is what he said. He said, Dustin won't fight the top guys. He will only fight Michael Chandler, Justin Gage, or Charles Oliveira. And the three of them are going around in circles and won't let anybody else in. So as I say, Submission Radio, This is what he had to say. I wish he'd be a little bit more clear as to what it is that doesn't excite him about me. 
are my fights not exciting enough? Or is it a skill issue? Or is it just because I don't have the name? Because if it's just because of the name, then here you should really consider. And I say this as nicely as possible because I'm not trying to be a dick, but he should really consider retiring. Because if you're just going to look at the names, if you're just going to look at people that can do big things for you, bro, there's dogs coming. There is dogs and they're young and they're hungry and they are looking to kill. When I watch Dustin Poirier fight Michael Chandler, it gets me pumped and I want to fight these guys. It would be really great to compete against them, but you can't do anything about it when they don't want to do it. Now, look, listen, he has some good points there. Listen, I love Dustin Poirier. Yeah, I'm not going to stand there and talk crap about him. I love the way he fights. I love everything he brings to the table. But if you're Benil Dariush, of course you want to fight those guys. And he hasn't had that chance to do it. Benil does get overlooked. He's ranked number four, you know, but he's not making headlines. He's unbeaten in the last eight fights over five years. He's been in the UFC for nine years. And at age 33, now he wants to make make a big push for the title and of course the money that comes with the title Fitzaya came out and Fitzaya was talking about Justin Gaethje he said I've been promised him I think I think it was strong language and he said I think I'm gonna get oh by the way do you guys want to know when they're when they're gonna fight this this will stun you in March but set that aside and you want to know why that rumor has been around for about two months this Fatsaya Gaethje business doesn't appear to be going away. So that's what you call a hardcore dream. Fatsaya is one of these guys who is on his way up and he's on his way up pretty damn fast. But he's not hes not quite there yet. And he has this style and he kind of gets it. You guys might remember Fatsaya. Fatsaya about two years ago decides to call out Kevin Lee and he goes out into the middle of nowhere I want to say was there snow on the ground it was at least the woods now my mind is playing a trick that there was snow on the ground but it was at least in the woods and he's calling for him and he's yelling for him and it was a simple piece of theater but it was more than anybody else had done so then fast forward the tape Fedzaya ends up fighting Bobby Green and he calls out Hezbollah. Now, Hezbollah's been going around and he's slapping people and people kind of know who he is. Even Dana got involved with something there. But not at that time. Fitzayev was kind of ahead of the curve on that. I had to go Google, see what he was talking about. It's low-hanging fruit, I get that. I'm just sharing with you, this is a guy who's strong, who looks the part, who has a playful side, who has a stone... Hold style, just like Justin Gaethje.